Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you one of the world's most shrinkable metals, pure sodium. The reason that materials get bigger when they get heated up is because the atoms that are inside of them are vibrating more. And when they vibrate, they need more space to move around. And so it essentially makes the material less dense and so it gets a little bit bigger. Normally this expansion with metals isn't very noticeable, but you can make it a little more noticeable when you have things that fit together really well. For example, right now this brass ball and this ring are at the same temperature. And so you can see the ball barely fits through the ring. It's a pretty snug fit, but it fits pretty easily. It can just fall through, in fact. So I'm gonna put it through like this, but now I'm gonna heat the ball up. So now it's been heated up for a little bit, and now it doesn't fit anymore. <laughs> but I'll just hold it here, and once it cools down, it'll be able to fit through again. So just by heating up the brass ball, it was able to expand a little tiny bit. But the only way we were able to see the expansion is because I had a ring that was able to fit almost perfectly around it. We can see this change in length a little bit better when we put two dissimilar metals together. For example, on the top of here is brass and on the bottom is iron. Now watch what happens when I put it in liquid nitrogen. You can see it's bent completely towards the brass side. But now as I heat it up, you can see that now it's bent towards the iron side. And so when you heat it up, it'll bend towards the one that has the lower expansion coefficient. You can get quite a significant amount of energy out of this as well. So I have a coin here that has two dissimilar metals adhered together. So I'm keeping it warm in my hand, and when it's warm in my hand, it bends one way. But if I set it on the table, it cools down and it pops up. So the metals that I've shown here don't actually have a very large coefficient of expansion when you heat them. What's cool about sodium metal is that it has a huge coefficient of expansion. It's about 10 times higher than iron. And what this means is we should be able to actually see the change in length or volume of a piece of sodium. I have a piece of sodium here, so I'm gonna smash it down and roll it down into a long rod. All right, so here's our sodium rod. So first let's measure it. We get 34 and a half centimeters. Okay, now we're gonna cool it down. Put it in our liquid nitrogen here. Okay, now let's pull it out. So now we're right around 34 centimeters. So it's lost about a half a centimeter. So I heat it back up now and it gets back to 34 and a half centimeters. Here's a sped up version where I pour on the liquid nitrogen while it's laying on the table and you can actually see it shrink. So this is so cool. This is the only situation where I've actually been able to see a length change due to thermal contraction. With a normal metal, you can't show this because the thermal contraction is so much lower. For example, we'd have to have a piece of steel that's 10 times longer than this. But when you get the length so long, it's hard to heat it up or cool it without it just reaching room temperature because the surface area is so large. And of course, since this is sodium, there's a good way to get rid of a sodium snake. Just throw it in a bucket of water. Okay, here's our sodium snake. So the sodium metal actually changed length by around a half a centimeter. So let's see if this actually lines up with what we would expect based on its thermal expansion coefficient. Our entire length of sodium is around 34 and a half centimeters. And the linear thermal expansion coefficient of sodium is 70 times 10 to the negative six over degrees Celsius. What that means is that we should expect around 70 times 10 to the negative six changes in centimeters per centimeter of length per degree Celsius. So going from room temperature to liquid nitrogen temperatures is a change of around 220 degrees Celsius. So to figure out how much change we should expect, we just take the initial length, which is 34 and a half centimeters, times our thermal expansion coefficient, which is 70 times 10 to the negative six per degree change, and then times 220 degrees Celsius. And surprisingly, what we get is 0.53 centimeters, which is almost exactly what we measured. 
Now normally to see a change in length, you need a piece of metal that's really long. For example, bridges need to have flexible connections that can move in and out depending on how hot of day it is. Because it's one big long piece of metal, you need to be able to let that metal expand and contract when it gets cold or hot outside. During extreme heat, thermal expansion can even cause railroads to buckle. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. And also hit the bell so you can be notified when I release my latest video. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.